Hi and welcome, I'm Gavin Lon. So, is C Sharp better than Java? This is indeed a tough one. In the right corner, we have the new up-and-coming contender, C Sharp. In the left corner, we have the defending champion, Java. And C Sharp delivers the final blow and wins by knockout. Okay, 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 yes. So I have a bias towards C Sharp and .NET. Java is an amazing technology. So is C Sharp and .NET. So in this video, I attempt to make a somewhat objective comparison between C Sharp and Java. Right, let's look at an overview of Java. Java is a programming language and is also a computer platform. Java was originally developed and designed by James Gosling, a Canadian computer scientist. It was first released in 1995 by Sun Microsystems. Java has consistently been rated as in the top five most popular programming languages in the world by reputable sources. It is an object-oriented programming language, and its principles and syntax is based on the C and C++ programming languages. The Java platform is a collection of technologies that contain an execution engine, a compiler, and a collection of libraries. A key feature of Java is based on the write once, run anywhere philosophy. The fact that a single code base written in Java can be used to run on a multitude of different types of devices is a huge competitive advantage over other programming languages. This was especially true when it was first released in 1995. The Java platform runs on billions of devices and environments worldwide, including mobile devices, desktop computers, laptop computers, the internet, game consoles, medical devices, scientific supercomputers, in data centers, and many others. Java is known for being fast, dependable, and secure. It is a collection of software and specifications. Java is a high-level programming language that runs within its own environment known as the JRE, Java Runtime Environment. A core part of the JRE is the JVM, or Java Virtual Machine. This is basically how Java works. Java is first compiled into bytecode. Java bytecode can only run within the JRE. The JVM interprets the bytecode in order to run it on the underlying hardware. So for example, if a Java application is running on a Windows platform, the JVM interprets the bytecode so that the code is appropriately executed on a Windows platform. If the underlying operating system is, for example, Linux, the JVM will interpret the bytecode so that it can be appropriately executed on the relevant Linux platform. So, let's look at an overview of C Sharp. C Sharp was developed by Anders Heilsberg and his team at Microsoft. It was first released in 2001. I've heard Anders Heilsberg say in an interview that the goal when developing C Sharp was to provide the power and expressiveness of C++ while also providing the rapid application capabilities inherent in Visual Basic. It is a high-level programming language that runs in an environment known as .NET. C Sharp is also consistently rated by reputable sources as one of the top five most popular programming languages. With the first release of .NET, C Sharp applications initially only ran on Windows platforms. In 2016, .NET Core allowed for C-Sharp applications to be cross-platform, where one code base could be used to run on multiple platforms, for example, Windows, Mac OS, as well as Linux platforms. The Xamarin framework meant you could create cross-platform mobile applications where one code base could be used to run C-Sharp applications on both Android and iOS devices. Please note that the Xamarin framework has now evolved into the .NET MAUI framework. The release of .NET Core was a huge step in the evolution of .NET. However, it also meant that there were now two strands of .NET. The first release of .NET, known as the .NET framework, which could only run on Windows devices, and .NET Core, which enabled .NET to be cross-platform. In 2020, .NET 5 was released, which unified these two main strands of .NET. So from this point on, .NET is a unified cross-platform software technology 
that can now compete with the likes of Java as a cross-platform solution. So, how does c -sharp and .NET basically work? c -sharp is typically JIT compiled, just in time compiled. Note that you can also AOT, ahead of time compile, your c -sharp code, where you can distribute your c -sharp applications as one executable, but typically c -sharp code is just in time compiled. So, how does just in time compilation work? So the higher level .NET language, for example C Sharp, Visual Basic .NET or F Sharp, is first compiled into common intermediate language code. This common intermediate language code lives inside .NET assemblies. These are the fundamental building blocks of .NET applications. The assemblies are saved to the target computer's relevant storage facility. When, for example, a C Sharp method is called at runtime from within a particular assembly, the JIT compiler service that is provided by the Common Language Runtime, or Core CLR, in .NET, first checks to see if the code for the relevant method is compiled into machine language code. Remember, the IL code cannot be understood directly by the CPU. If the method has not yet been compiled into machine language code, the JIT service compiles the relevant CIL code into machine language code. The relevant machine language code can now be understood by the CPU of the target computer, which could, for example, be a machine running Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. So a single code base written in C Sharp can be used to run on multiple devices and platforms. Write once, run anywhere. So let's look at the similarities between these two popular software technologies. Then after this, we'll look at the differences between the two. We'll then decide which of these languages wins the battle. Some programming languages like C and C++ can run close to the metal. What does close to the metal mean? It means that code created in these languages can run directly on the operating system. Both c -sharp and Java run on top of an additional layer that in turn runs on top of the operating system. c -sharp runs on .NET and Java runs on the JRE, Java Runtime Environment. Both the .NET environment and the Java runtime environment provide services that abstract away common repetitive tasks like handling security, exception handling, memory management and garbage collection. This provides a massive advantage for the programmer that is now able to concentrate on the business rules of the relevant application and not have to worry about writing code for these repetitive tasks that are now abstracted away by the relevant runtime environment. .NET contains the CLR, Common Language Runtime, that automatically provides services like interpreting and compiling the code, memory management, garbage collection, security, and exception handling. In both c -sharp and Java, the code is not directly compiled into machine language code. But in both languages, the original code is compiled into a predefined format. In c -sharp and .NET, the c -sharp code is first compiled into Common Intermediate Language Code. In Java, the code is first compiled into Java bytecode. The syntax for both languages is based on C and C++. C Sharp and Java are both statically typed programming languages. Statically typed languages have an advantage over dynamically typed languages, like for example JavaScript or Python. When a programming language is statically typed, type-related errors can be flagged and fixed at compile time, which means better robustness at runtime. Statically typed languages typically perform better at runtime over dynamically typed programming languages because they don't have the overhead of interpreting the type of variables based on the values assigned to them. c -sharp and Java are both object-oriented programming languages where the principles of encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism and abstraction can be applied to create clean, extensible and easy to maintain code. Solid principles can be implemented for architecting applications so that, for example, each class has a single responsibility, code is easily reused, and the design of the application's constituents are extensible. Both languages typically use semi-interpreted or runtime just-in-time compilation. The concepts of value types and reference types exist in both languages. Value types like integer, float, and boolean are stored in a more structured way on the stack in memory, and reference types like strings and user-defined types are stored in a more haphazard way on the heap. Wow, so these two languages are very similar in many respects. So let's look at some of the main differences between C-sharp and Java. 
then we'll be in a good position to decide which one of these great languages wins. One of the most significant differences between C Sharp and Java is that C Sharp allows you to use pointers in code. If you are familiar with C or C++, you'll no doubt know about pointers. Java does not allow you to use pointers. Pointers allows the programmer to write code that directly accesses memory. This is both a pro and a con. By using pointers, you are circumventing the safety provided through managed code. So you may gain a performance advantage by appropriately using pointers in your code, but at the same time, you are also potentially compromising runtime robustness. You are deciding to incorporate your own memory management functionality into your code rather than allow .NET to do this for you. This can be a risk, but also may result in a performance gain. Generics. C Sharp handles generics differently than in Java. In C Sharp, for example, the Java ArrayList type can be strongly typed, but you can't use primitive types for this purpose, for example, int. In Java, you have to use the boxed integer in order to strongly type the ArrayList. Of course, an ArrayList type in C Sharp does not use generics at all, but the list type must be strongly typed using generics, and unlike with Java's ArrayList, you are able to strongly type the list type with primitives like int. Another c -sharp feature that Java lacks is operator overloading. Link in c -sharp is an excellent feature that can be used for performing, for example, filtering, grouping, and aggregation operations against collections of objects. Java added streams to the collections library in Java 8, but this functionality is not as flexible as Link. Another feature that c -sharp has and Java does not have are extension methods. These are static methods that you can call as though they are part of a class or struct. They allow you to provide extra functionality without the need for the relevant assembly to be recompiled. An extension method is a static method that is called on a class instance. c -sharp allows you to split a class struct or interface over several files. These are called partial classes. Partial classes make it easy for several developers to work on the same class where each developer can add functionality to the same class by adding code to separate files. So this functionality allows developers to collaborate on the same class, but at the same time work independently from one another. Java doesn't provide support for conditional compilation. c -sharp provides support for conditional compilation through preprocessor directives. c -sharp supports a value type known as a struct. This is similar to a class, but the advantage of a struct over a class is that it is far more memory efficient than a class. A struct is a value type and a class is a reference type. At present, there is no equivalent to a struct in Java. Java has a huge array of third-party libraries and has extensive documentation. c -sharp also has a lot of third-party packages and libraries available that are growing day by day. Microsoft Learn is an excellent platform that Microsoft provides that c -sharp developers and aspiring c -sharp developers can use free of charge to better their comprehension of c -sharp and .NET. According to reputable sources, at present there are millions more Java developers than c -sharp developers in the world. But other reputable sources claim that this gap is rapidly closing. c -sharp is generally much faster than Java. So, those are a few similarities and differences between two very popular programming languages. So, which of these technologies wins? Well, as always, this is not as simple as just... As to which of these technologies to choose for developing an application depends on many factors, like for example, personal context and the type of application you wish to develop, and of course also the pre-existing skills you may have in your company. So, some advantages of using Java are as follows. There is detailed documentation available. There is a huge array of third-party Java libraries. There is a huge number of Java developers in the world. Currently, many millions more than c -sharp developers. But that gap is closing as c -sharp becomes more and more popular. A huge community of Java developers exist that can provide you with support. Java has been around a long time and is a mature language and platform. You can write once and run anywhere. Java is cross-platform and runs on billions of different types of devices and in different types of environments around the world. 
Some advantages for using C Sharp are as follows. C Sharp is heavily backed by Microsoft Corporation, which is of course the largest software company in the world. It is steadily growing in popularity, and therefore the number of skilled developers in C Sharp is significantly growing. Microsoft Learn and the community provide great learning material and tutorials in C Sharp and .NET. C Sharp and .NET enables your applications to provide great performance. C Sharp provides some low-level features that Java does not provide, like using pointers. Other notable features included in C Sharp like structs, a better implementation of generics, the flexibility provided in the linked technology are not currently included in Java. C Sharp is also cross-platform, so like with Java, you can write once and run anywhere. Of course, if you need to create an application that integrates extremely well with Microsoft technologies, clearly .NET and C Sharp should be your choice. These are both two excellent software technologies, and it really does come down to personal context as to which of these technologies apart. you choose. If you are a company that wants to create an enterprise greenfield application, the first question should always be, what existing skills do I already have in my company? If your prevailing skill set is Java, then Java is the clear choice. However, if your prevailing skill set is C Sharp and .NET, then C Sharp and .NET is the logical choice. If you want to develop an enterprise full stack web application, Note that with C Sharp and .NET, you can use one technology for both front-end and back-end development. This is because you can now use the Blazor framework to develop the front-end for your applications which can be written in C Sharp. So with C Sharp and .NET, you can leverage the benefit of using one technology for the entire full-stack application. From the research that I've done in general, it seems like Java developers get paid slightly more than C Sharp developers. But other evidence tells me that this may change in the not too distant future. Note that skilled C Sharp developers still generally get paid very well. If salary is your criteria, my advice is to research salaries in and around your area, the area in which you live, for C Sharp and Java developers. You may just prefer the look and feel of one technology over the other. I hope you have enjoyed this video. So please let me know in the comments section which of these languages wins, Java or C Sharp. I've worked with both of these technologies and my preference is definitely C Sharp and .NET. I hope I haven't triggered you Java developers too much in this video. Please prove me wrong in the comments section, I'm ready for you. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this through my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will of course be greatly appreciated. I love reading your comments, so please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. I've recently joined X, formerly Twitter, so it would be great if you followed me on X. My username is at GavinLonDigital. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care.